Today is Patch Tuesday, a day where Microsoft releases updates for Windows to make sure that all those pesky little bugs that are in their code get removed so that you and I can use our computers in a safer way. On today's Patch Tuesday, they have patched out a couple bugs that I think are pretty interesting, and I'm surprised that more people aren't talking about them. One in particular is a remote bug in the TCP IP stack of Windows. In this video, I'm gonna break down what that means, why that is so crazy, and why I'm shocked that more people aren't talking about it. So if you're new here, hi, my name is Ed, this is Low Level Learning, a channel where I talk about cybersecurity, software security, programming, uh, memes, I don't know. Hey, if you wanna hang out with me or you just like these videos, hit that sub button, I really appreciate it. So I got this notification about this bleeping computer article which talks about the Patch Tuesday on today, August 12th. As you see in the title here, Microsoft releases a patch that fixes nine zero days, six being actively exploited in the wild in Microsoft Windows. So again, this is a good thing for the computer community. Uh, but as I was reading through the patches that are released and the zero days that are being fixed, I found one of them extremely shocking. So let's see, we got a scripting engine memory corruption vulnerability that allows for remote code execution in uh, Microsoft Edge in Internet Explorer mode. Okay, so basically, if someone sends you a link and you click on it while you're using Edge in IE mode, that allows you to corrupt the browser and potentially get code execution on that computer. This is a classic case of browser exploitation bugs where, you know, the code that runs in the browser is doing certain things to interpret the data that your browser is served. And if that's used incorrectly, or you could make the computer do malicious things. And that's not too crazy, mainly because no, no one uses Edge, uh, but also no one uses Edge in IE mode. So both of those things put together while dangerous, not the worst thing in the world. There's a couple of privesks here, and obviously a privesk is just the drivers on Windows run in kernel mode, and kernel mode drivers, by just the nature of how they're supposed to function, take data from the user. Okay, we're just serving me ads. I'm moving the window around, very good. Um, they, they take data from the user, and they process that data in the kernel, right? Now, obviously, if you don't process that data correctly, you don't do memory checking and stuff in the kernel, that can cause the kernel mode driver to have memory corruption vulnerabilities that are a result of the data the user uh, the user gives it, right? So that allows you to escalate your privilege up to system on Windows if you know what you're doing. Now, there are a ton of these, right? A ton of bugs like this, web securities, kernel exploitation, yada, yada, yada. It's just another Tuesday for Microsoft. But the one that I found really interesting, let's see if I can find it real quick, TCP. Yeah, so CVE 2024-38063. So this vulnerability is the one that truly just has my mind blown. So this is vulnerability uh, 2024 a critical 9.8. And similar bugs are also coming out in this same patch Tuesday. This is a Windows TCP IP remote code execution vulnerability. And so luckily, this is one that they have not be, uh, seen being exploited. Exploited here literally means that like Microsoft has observed a threat actor taking advantage of this vulnerability. So not a huge deal on, on that front, but it is a huge deal in the fact that like if you haven't patched yet, which actually is like literally me right now, um, you are vulnerable to this attack. So, <laughs> I uh, probably should patch before I upload this video. Anyway, uh, let's talk about what's going on in this bug here. So here we're looking at the MSRC webpage. Now the MSRC webpage, it's a Microsoft Security Response Center. And here's where they're going to lay out basically every known CVE that has been found to Windows, right? The thing is they don't wanna give out a ton of the vulnerabilities of how to trigger these things because if they did that, they would effectively be creating a database of all the things that could go wrong on, of all the ways that a hacker could attack somebody if they're not like up to date on, on their patches, right? If they haven't patched into the most recent version. And again, whenever I talk about this kind of stuff, I use my grandma as an example, right? My grandmother who sits at home and plays video games on her computer, little Mahjong tiles, little Farmville, whatever on Facebook, Boomer book, um, she doesn't patch her computer. So Microsoft does not want to have a repository of ways for people to hack my grandma, right? So they don't give a ton of detail, but we can kind of infer what's going on based on the details that are put out in the CVSS score and the way that they say to mitigate the attack, right? So let's kind of walk through here and figure out, first of all, why is this a 9.8 out of 10? That is crazy. So based on what the bug says, it's a Windows TCP IP remote code execution vulnerability. So you're probably thinking, wait a minute, like HTTP, for example, that is a protocol that rides over TCP. If there were a bug in an HTTP server, wouldn't that also be a TCP vulnerability? No. When you see vulnerabilities that are like this, a Windows TCP IP vulnerability, what that means is that there is not a vulnerability in 
the implementation of TCP for a protocol. There is a vulnerability in some part of the TCP IP stack inside the Windows kernel. To explain what this means, let's kind of go into the nature of how operating systems work. To explain kind of how this works, right? Computers package the data that goes across the internet in a series of layers that are called the OSI model, right? Now you're probably experienced with networking stuff. This probably isn't news to you, but as it applies to security research, you need to understand that at every layer of the OSI model, there's some amount of encapsulation. Encapsulation being data that contextualizes the data on the inside, right? So for example, at the transport layer where we have the TCP layer, when a TCP segment is read by the operating system, it needs to be encapsulated and the data needs to go to a lower layer, right? And we need to do that for every layer of the OSI model. The operating system has the code that does the encapsulation and de-encapsulation as you process and send the data. This video is sponsored by yours truly, me. <laughs> My website, Low Level Academy, is a course website that teaches you the fundamentals of computers. You can't write code on computers that is effective and efficient if you don't know how computers work at a fundamental level. Low Level Academy has a bunch of courses with video examples on C, networking in C, threading in C, ARM assembly. I've got one more coming out soon, actually, on how to implement your own HTTP server in C. Right now in the ARM course, you can go get a free preview and learn about the load operation by going and watching this video. If you want to go learn about C and you want to learn about maybe arrays, you can go watch the array example for free. Go check out any of these courses. We're on sale right now. You can't code without knowing the fundamentals. And where do you learn the fundamentals? At Low Level Academy. Back to the video, scary Windows stuff. So when you see bugs like this, what it literally means is that there's a vulnerability somewhere in the way that Windows processes something about the TCP IP stack. Let's go into this further and figure out what we have. So attack vector, network, obviously, we have to use the network to trigger this vulnerability. Attack complexity low, that's very crazy. That's honestly wild. It means that there doesn't have to be extenuating circumstances or there doesn't, doesn't have to be a, a precondition to make this happen. A, an attacker can reasonably expect to trigger this every time they see another Windows computer. Zero privileges required, user interaction none, meaning that not the user like the attacker, the user meaning like, this is typically referred to as a zero click, right? Where how many times does the attacked user have to interact with the system to get this to go off? The answer is none. There is no change scope uh, in the vulnerability and there is nothing and confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the system are all highly impacted. There's not a ton of detail about how this exploit is actually exploited, but we can get a pretty good guess of how we get there by reading the following mitigations. Systems are not affected if IPv6 is disabled on the target machine. Hmm, where do we think the bug is, guys? Where where could the bug possibly be in Windows? Okay, so, so what we know is that there's definitely a vulnerability uh, in the Windows TCP IP stack in IPv6, and this is particularly bad for a couple of reasons. One, it's a TCP IP vulnerability. You don't have to have an open port. You don't have to have a computer that runs SMB, or you don't have to do anything. You can just have the native TCP IP stack and that's it, and you're vulnerable. Also too, the reason why it's even worse than that is that IPv6, a lot of people don't understand IPv6. And the thing about IPv6 is that, let, let me talk about networking real quick, because this is really important. When we're talking about the internet, right, all computers are addressed by these things called IP addresses, right? You're probably watching this channel, you probably know that. That's not really very, that's not crazy information, right? But the thing about IPv4 is that there are only two to the power of 32 marshmallows, two to the power of 32 addresses that are available. And obviously there are more than two to the power of 32 devices on the internet. The way we fixed this, and this happened a long time ago, we actually ran out of IPv4 addresses to give out a long time ago, is this thing called NAT. The way we fix this is with this thing called NAT, Network Address Translation. And all that basically means is that when a packet leaves your router, instead of having the source IP address of your internal private IP address, that is an IP address that anyone can use in their own homes, instead of giving that out to the internet, we translate that address to the public IP address on the front end of your router so that we only have to issue addresses to routers that are public, not to all the computers, therefore preserving IPv4 addresses. Now, the reason this matters for the scope of this conversation is that IPv6 is naturally publicly routable. Let me say that again. IPv6, because it is a v6 address and has literally billions and billions of addresses, does not need NAT. 
Therefore, it is publicly routable by default. Now, obviously, routers are a thing. Firewalls are a thing. We don't all need to, we're not all supposed to put our devices on the internet publicly. But I think what happened for a long time is that the NAT translation rules of a modern IPv4 router kind of gave people the security by default rule in their, their, their router they buy off the, the ISP or they buy off of Best Buy or whatever, right? And so when they get this new IPv6 enabled device, they may not know that they have to specify, oh, by the way, don't let packets from the internet in first, right? We NAT with IPv4 gave us this kind of security by default mentality that IPv6 doesn't necessarily have. So yeah, I guess we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, kind of a wild bug. If you're looking for more details on this, go ahead and give this a gizoogle, 2024-38063. And uh, we'll see what happens. If you're new here, hit that sub button, go, go patch, go patch windows right now. If you like videos like this about bug breakdowns, go check out this other breakdown about another crazy bug I think you'll also like. We'll see you there.